beautifuls, this is Aron here, and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. So last episode, Rod, we kind of traded something to Sir Mithras. We don't know what happened or what we traded, but Ebby is in a trance, and he's about to give she she sorry she's about to give Rod a knife to go kill Viorica, <laughs> and we did not want that. No can do, princess. Don't you want to save the prince? I. I look at Emmy, who has not even turned to glance at us. I glare at Varg, who is still standing in my way, grinning. Subside, Varg. Ah, feisty. You're far more interesting. You are far more interesting princess than your stepsister. Well, that's great. <laughs> I try to step, uh, sidestep, but Varg follows my motions. I try again and again, but he just thwarts my progress. He holds his hands up in the air, eyebrows raised. Tell me, what would you do if I let? I did let you go? Would you stop him from killing the girl? Rod would never kill her. He would never do anything to harm the person he loves. He refused to do it, and he has no reason to do it now. Unless he is put under a spell. Varg is silent for a few moments as he considers. Interesting. He steps aside and bows. Go ahead, then. You... are letting me go? I would like to see this play end as it may, without any strings attached. Oh, chapter 10, The Mermaid's Voice. Oh, the last chapter, right? <laughs> I'm very short... Short memory. Short, short time, term memory? I don't know. I don't know the word. I stop in my tracks when I see Sir Mithra standing just in front of the main door to the throne room. He looks at me expectantly as I approach. Sir Mithra? Good evening, your highness. Such a lovely night tonight, isn't it? Only half an hour left before you return 18. Oh. Do not forget our deal, princess. Come midnight, I'll be requesting your aid in exchange for helping the prince break his curse. I clench my hands into a tight fist. Helping the prince break his curse? Rod, killing someone is not what I wanted. Sir Mithras puts a finger to his lip. You wouldn't want to attract the attention of the knights, would you? There would be quite a bit of explaining to do then. I glare at him, then take a deep breath and lower my voice. You did not tell me that breaking Rod's curse meant killing someone. Oh, but I am only honoring my end of the deal. Perhaps you should have done your research before agreeing. The grin on his lips never wavers, but I can see the amusement in his eyes. I relied entirely on the story Emmy told me that was my biggest mistake. I should have read the full fairy tale. But now it seems you finally know the full story of the prince's fairy tale, hmm? To break his curse, Prince Ron must kill his beloved with, this, with the knife his sister brought, has brought him, just like in the fairy tale. Wow. <laughs> Sir Mithras continues to smile at me. I realize that he's speaking slowly, like one might speak to a child. Did they even do that in The Little Mermaid? Disney? I don't even think Disney wanted that. I don't think they wanted to know that. So condescending. No. Wait. I start to realize that Sir Mithras is purposely drawing out this conversation to stall me. I need to go. Mithras does not stop me when I slide past him to open the doors to the throne room. The first thing I see when I enter the throne room is Rod. He is standing in the middle of the area with Emmy in his arms. Is... is she alright? Rod gently places Emmy on the throne. He leans down to look more closely at her sleeping face. and reaches down to take the object in her hand before he faces me. I can see the metallic glimmer in his hand and know that he is holding the knife Emmy brought with her. Where did she even get this knife? Is Rod not under a trance? And it's only Emmy? He pauses to stare at it, then turns suddenly, eyes widening at some sight in another part of the room. I follow his gaze to the corner of the room where Viorica floats in mid-air. Her eyes are closed and her hands are clasped, as if she is just sleeping. Viorica? But how? Such a pleasant surprise, isn't it? Sir Mithras walks into the room with his hands clasped behind his back. You! Good evening, your highness. Is this your doing? Sir Mithras just smiles at him pleasantly. Rod only glares back at him. Oh, the guards aren't coming, Rod. <laughs> Sir Mithras clicks his tongue and chuckles. I apologize, your highness, but no one will be able to hear you no matter how loud you shout. Not even your witch friend will hear anything through my magic. He knows Dolores is here. I glance around the room and notice that Sir Mithras has created his silent green barrier. This is the same magic he used yesterday. Now let us get back to the matter at hand. You're running out of time, Prince Rod. It would be a shame to see you perish here after the princess went through the trouble of asking me to save your life. Um, I didn't expect 
the saving is you killing Viorica, but okay. Michiko, what is he talking about? I... The princess didn't want you to die, so she asked me to help break your curse. So Mithra spreads his arm, gesturing toward both Emmy and Viorica. And, that's, and so I have been kind enough to set the stage and gather its actors for what I hope to be a wonderful fi final? Final? Finale? I don't know, that word always bothered me. <laughs> I can't help but wonder how this fairy tale will end. Why would you do this, Michiko? I did not know it meant killing Viorica, I swear. That is why I came here to stop you. I told you so many times that there was nothing you could do to help me and yet you still refused to listen to me. Because I refuse to let you die. Can you not see that you're important to me, Ron? Oh my, what a scandal. <laughs> Michiko. I turn us around Mithras and stare daggers at him. I asked you to help, Rod. Why did you have to involve Emmy in this? It, is, it was a necessary requirement that the princess be the one to give him the knife, your highness. It was, after all, the mermaid's sister that brought her the knife to kill her beloved. So that's how she knew about all of this. She came here crying and begging me to break my curse because she didn't want me to die. I almost wanted to do it. But I could never kill someone. That is why I will always refuse to break my curse. Even if... Even if I really wanted to live. Or want to, not wanted. Hmm, perhaps I miscalculated. Oh well, this can be remedied. Sir Mithras waves his hand his fingers begin to glow subtly with magic. What are you? Uh oh. You possessed Rod. Rod? A faint green glow surrounds Rod as he doubles over. What are you doing to him? What I should have done to begin with. The witch who cursed him said that he must do this of his own accord. But seeing as he refuses, I'm going to have to bend the rules slightly. Rod stands abruptly and begins walking toward Viorica. The knife in his hand glistens beneath the patches of scattered moonlight in the room. Princess, he's going to kill Viorica. Oh, he couldn't. He couldn't curse Sebi. Yes, Sebi, please tell me everything. <laughs> Stop this, Sir Mithras. Where is Delora when we need her? Or, never there. I run toward Rod and grab my arms around his waist and attempt to stop him. But whether through magic or his own strength, he continues onward. I end up being dragged behind him. Rod, snap out of it, bro. Well, like, let me not say bro, because I don't want to be my brother. My stepbrother. Rod! Well, poor Sevi, I must kill her. His gaze is so glassy and his words are so mechanical that he sounds nothing like himself. No! No! T hello? Mithra, stop this! I'm ending our deal! You cannot- you cannot end a deal with the witch. Once you've made it, you made it. My apologies, your highness, but not even I can dispel my magic once it has been casted. That sucks. It will only fade of its own viol- Volition. I thought it was a violation. Volition. Once what needs to be done has transpired. That, or perhaps, in the most unlikely circumstances, the prince will simply shake the spell himself. I'm pretty sure Rod should do that. Right now, come on, Rod. Though Mithras' words are apologetic, his expression is anything but. In fact, he looks amused by it all. Not so fast. Delora? She's here? A crimson ball of light rushes towards Mithras as he waves his hand through the air and is barely able to conjure a shield to protect himself from Dolores' magic. Delora! Yay, she's here! Thank God! It wasn't exactly easy to find you all, especially with the silencing spell. Such a nuisance. That is not important! Help me stop Rod! Rod slowly appears beneath Rod's feet and spreads, spreads up his legs, freezing him in place. I sigh with relief as I collapse onto the floor. My arms are sore with the effort of trying to hold Rod back. My thoughts clicks his tongue as he faces Delora. I don't believe you're invited to this plate, traitor. <coughs> it's fighting against magic. Light gathers around Mithras's hand. Moments later, he releases the energy toward her. Delora in turn conjures a barrier, successfully protecting herself from Mithras's magic. I always did fancy myself a party crasher. Still, the thing that you were alive this whole time, Myth, Miss, his real name, he, oh, uh, what? Oh, Delora said Myth. I thought he called her Myth. I was like, wait, I thought her name was Delora. His real name, he is one of the Tenebrarum Barrier's servants. This person was my mother's servant? 
Allow me to correct you. I am her only faithful servant. I'm nothing like that ungrateful bastard who betrayed her to the fairies. What was he talking about? Well, whatever it is you're planning, forget about it. There's no way we're letting you get away with it. Oh, well, do try your best. But first, a reminder. I am the superior witch here. Energy crackles in the air and sparks begin to form around his hand. The spell is taking longer than his other spells. I notice the Laura's worrying moments before she is able to cast a shield on herself. This is not good. Mithras releases the bolts of lightning in Dolores' direction. Oh jeez! The impact causes both the shield and the ground to shudder. <coughs> Sorry, I had a burp. Dolora! The sweat clears and miraculously Dolores stands unharmed. No sooner has a sigh escaped my lips than another frightening sound echoes across the room. Oh, that sounds horrible. There's a loud crack, and I realize that, it's th that is coming from Dolores' shield. Everything after that happens in a blur. Dolores is still trying to hold the shield up when Mithras casts another spell at it. It shatters and the magic seeps through and hits her directly. My gosh. Really now, have you forgotten the most important lesson in defense magic? Always conjure another shield after being hit by a powerful spell. Or, oh, I do apologize. Perhaps I did not give you enough time to cast another shield. How thoughtless of me. Dolora lays on the floor, unmoving. Dolora! I am about to rush to her side when Mithras moves to stand in front of me with a ma malicious grin on his face. It would do you no good to be in denial, princess. How could you? How could you hurt another witch? It, it is not a crime to destroy a traitor. He looks back at Dolora with clear disdain, then he sets his eyes back on me and raises his eyebrows. It is foolish of you to try to stop this. You wanted this, and I will not allow you to renege re on our deal. The prince will break his curse and you will help me. Help you? Yes, I went to great pains to make sure Alcaster kept you safe just so you could repay me. You said that you made a deal with Alcaster to borrow the knight's assistance. And what, and what would I need the knight's assistance for, dear princess? I never need the knights. I just needed Alcaster to keep you safe. I would have gotten rid of him myself if I wasn't sure the king would eventually find me. So this whole time you... For only trying to keep me safe? To use me? Use is such a simple, ugly word. Remember, I just want you to help me. Princess! I turn around and realize that Dolores' fell and Rod has faded and that he's now only a few feet away from Riorca. Rod! Step out of it, bro! <laughs> I force myself to run toward him as fast as I can manage. I will not let you kill anyone! But I don't know what I, what I must do to stop him, so I do the first thing that comes to mind. I put myself between Rod and Viorca just as he's about to plunge knife into her. Princess! Oh. Okay. My body is wracked with the pain the moment the blade sinks into my shoulder. Ugh. I collapse to the floor and hold- Okay, that's one way to stop it, you know? I collapse to the floor and hold onto my injured shoulder. I can feel my blood seeping through between my fingers. You fool! You could have easily been killed. I do not care. I- I love Rod. Oh, I finally admit it! And I would never let him do something that he would regret for the rest of his life. He's probably gonna regret this too, but... Not as much as killing a person. I cringe. Tears cloud my vision as pain worsens. Michiko! I feel Rod's arms around me as he cradles me to his chest. I look up at him to see that his eyes are fixed on my bleeding shoulder. Rod looks at me with ang anguish. He grabs a handkerchief from his pocket and presses it to my shoulder. I can't believe I did this. I th you didn't do it. The spell did it. Let's say it that way. I stare in shock as his lips move. It is not Sebi speaking, but him. Your voice. You broke your curse. Wait, how? He, he stabbed me, though. But how? Uh, exactly. <laughs> so he had to stab me because I was his new lover? That would totally make sense. A bright light envelops us and for a few moments I have to close my eyes against its brightness. I reach out to grab my necklace but it is gone. I open my eyes in panic but the necklace is definitely not there. Michiko, the glass slippers. I glance down and see a pair of smooth glass slippers on my feet. Oh, it's on my feet now? What, sh what happened to my shoes that I was currently wearing? You broke a curse by breaking mine. I hear the sound of shattering glass and turn to see Mithra staring at, at a broken vial. What is that? Ross has begun to form at his feet and is now spreading up his legs. What is happening? 
Always have a backup, as they say. Seems like you're the one who forgot the basics of combat. Never turn your back on an opponent unless you're sure that they're dead. Your bloated eagle with his wonders and turning the tide of battle. Delora is now back on her feet and walking toward Mithras. She dusts off her dress as she moves. Delora is unharmed? You, but how? Did you really think I'd forget to conjure another shield? The frost has now made its way up to Mithras' neck. That frost works fast. Inconceivable. A lowly witch that you can never cast as powerful a spell. But she was best friends with my mom. Or was that Parfait? Delora gestures at the glass shards on the floor. That's where Parfait's new special potion comes handy. It makes my magic more powerful. The second mo most basic lesson is to never underestimate your opponent. Looks like you were the terrible pupil. Mithras opens his mouth to speak, or perhaps to scream, but by the time he opens his mouth, the frost has completely devoured him, leaving him nothing but an icy sculpture. Delora, Uchiko is... Has her bleeding stop? I think so. I cannot make out what they say after that. My world starts spinning and everything starts to blur so I close my eyes. I feel Delora's hand on my forehead, the warmth relaxes me somewhat. I got you, princess. Hang in there, Michiko. My body becomes heavier by the second as I lean my head against Rod's chest, and then I feel myself falling into never-ending darkness. That's fun. When I open my eyes, the first thing I see are the soft rays of sunlight seeping through the window. I am... in my own room? I tend to sit up and cringe when I feel a sharp pain in my shoulder. I reach out to touch it, only to realize that it has been neatly bandaged. Despite the injury, my body feels oddly light, stronger than it even was before. I remember. I placed myself in front of Yorika to stop Ra from hurting her. But where did this energy come from? It's my birthday! Guys, right? <laughs> the door opens and Emmy walks in with a tray of food in her hands. She stops when she realizes that I'm staring at her and me nearly drops a tray in her rush to stand beside me. Michiko, you're finally awake. I was so worried about you. So sorry. This was all my fault. What are you talking about? It was mine, not yours. I remember bringing the knife to Rod, but I can't remember much of what happened before or after that. Just that when I woke up in the throne room, I saw that you were bleeding in Rod's arms. I thought you were going to... The rest of Emmy's words break to pieces as she begins to cry. I'm so sorry. For forgetting about you. I made you work too hard while you were my personal maid, and... I shake my head with a sigh. It was not your fault. I was cursed, Emmy. But... I look at her tear-stained face. She was not at fault, yet here she is crying. She really is a good person. I spread my arms. Chico? I turn away, suddenly embarrassed. You, <laughs> you looked like you needed a hug. Emmy stares at me for a few moments. I'm about to reconsider when I suddenly feel her arms around me. Uh, don't be too rough though, okay? My shoulder. I'm so happy. I hug her back and stroke her hair. I cannot help but smile at the warmth that spreads my chest. Thank you. Emmy pulls back her face full of concern. What? What will happen to you and Rod now? I saw how close the two of you got. And I saw how Rod looked at you last night. Wait. Last night. So today is... My birthday, the day I become the barrier. Is that the reason I feel so strangely en energized? Oh! Emmy walks up to one of my doll shelves, one of my doll shelves, and pick up the doll she had placed there months ago. Happy birthday! I meant to give this to you earlier as a surprise before you were cursed. Anyway, I know it's not as pretty as the other dolls from your collection, but I hope that you like it. It is beautiful. Thank you. I take the doll in my arms as I knock. No, it, as a knock sounds on the door. That sucks! What's gonna happen between me and Rod? Or Rod and I, correct grammar. Come in. Oh, it's Rod. <laughs> the door opens and Rod steps inside. His eyes widen when he sees Emmy. Em? Oh, I was just about to leave. Emmy slides off of my bed and heads for the door, but before she closes it, she turns to us once again. I know how complicated this will be for the both of you, but I want to know that I will support you. I want you to know, so yeah. So my lips are sealed. Well, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work out. I mean, wings before finally closing the door behind her. There's an awkward silence in the room before Rod approaches me and sits on the edge of, my be of the bed. How are you feeling? It still hurts, but I will be fine. What's wrong? I'm just... 
not used to hearing her voice from your own lips. Oh, I see that you still have Sebi with you. I've grown too fond of him to completely set him aside. He's helped me through a lot. Bummer. I can't read his thoughts anymore. There was never any need for you to do that in the first place. Hmm, is that so? Ron shakes his head and sighs silently. So what happened last night? How is it that you were able to break your curse? You did not kill Yorika. In the original fairy tale, the Little Mermaid could retain her humanity only if the prince loved her back. Though it never happens in the fairy tale, it is still an element of her curse. But still, because the prince never fell in love with her, the only way for the mermaid to live was to kill him. I fell in love with you unknowingly. Oh, he's so cute! When you told me that you loved me as well last night, that broke my curse. I feel my cheeks turn warm, broad coughs, his own cheeks flushed. So there you have it. The little mermaid never had a fairy tale ending, but I did. I never had to kill Viorica. But because my curse stated, started with Viorica, I assumed it had to end with her too. It turns out that the person I love just needs to love me back. I was mistaken. I never needed to be Viorica. I... Same. We stare at each other for a few moments. The awkward silence returning. I change the subject as quickly as I can. What became of Sir Mithras? The Lord brought him back to Lady Parfait. She is the one who will properly punish him. And what of Viorica? Laura returned her to her home yesterday. She does not remember anything that happened. Everything is back to how it was then. You are back to being my stepbrother. No! I cannot help but feel crestfallen at this truth. Blood binds, but so do sibling bonds. Ron and I can never have what neither of us want. I don't want to forget these feelings I have for you, Michiko. If I had never made the deal with the witch, then maybe we might have actually been able to be together. Please don't talk like this, I'm so sad. But had you not been cursed, our paths never would have crossed. I reach for Rod's hand, he lifts his fingers through mine with a small smile. I... I love you, Rod. I love you too. But... This is so sad. This is so sad, my heart is literally broken in a thousand pieces. Rod leans forward and kisses my cheek. I know. You don't know, Rod. I'm so sad. Guys, I'm so sad. I can't cry because I have mascara on. <laughs> One month later. Ever since I broke my curse and became the new tenant Baron Barrier, I have been training under Parfait and Dolores so that I can learn to control my newfound powers. I never wanted this responsibility, but it is a burden I was born into. It is necessary to help maintain the balance between light and dark that has been missing for so long. Now that I am the new tenant barrier and barrier, Parfait wants the two of us to work together in maintaining the peace. Or that peace. Oh yeah, I'm in my fancy year again. I do not wish to cause any pain or suffering for, to the people, especially to the people whom I cherish. Sometimes I still wonder what Sir Mithras wanted me to do for him, but that is not important anymore. I still have much to learn about... Uh, much to learn, but right now is a new barrier my priority is to get rid of the fairy tale curse once and for all. For the time being, everyone at the margin waits patiently for the day that I will learn to lift their curses. Since everything transpired, my relationship with Ophelia and Emmy has improved. Emmy is fond of calling me the best sister, even though I am the only one she has. My relationship with the king, however, has yet to be mended. I'm doing my best to open up to him and give him a chance, but the efforts are slow going. I do not ask why he acted the way he did in the past, but I know that in order to move forward, I must let go of the past. And it's finally time I have been waiting for all, for, waiting for this all day. I head back into my room to change my dress into something less conspicuous. Afterwards, I head out into town and into the forest where my dad's a needed meeting. Meeting? It's a relief that the king allows me to leave the palace on my own. I would not have been able to come here with the guards. I guess me being the tenor baron bearer puts him at ease. If the title reassures him and allows me to come out here on my own, to meet Rod, then I'm not complaining. Wait. Oh, are we dating in secret? What's going on? <laughs> Rod still uses the secret passage he has always used to sneak out of the palace. Emmy knows about our secret meetings and helps cover for our disappearances if necessary. It makes me happy that Emmy approves of our relationship, that we do not have to keep a secret from absolutely everyone. This isn't going to work, though. <laughs> At first, Rod and I both attempted to keep our distance without making it seem too obvious to everyone around us. Though Ophelia seems to suspect something is going on between the two of us, she has not qu asked questions. 
Emma was not happy with our decision. She was, she said she felt terrible that we would be forced to let go of something so precious on account of our titles. She was right, more than that. It was difficult for the two of us to deny our feelings for each other. In the end, we came up with a solution. Even if it is temporary, we decided to secretly meet up in the forest every once in a while so that we could be together without any pretenses. Even just for a little while. When I catch sight of Rod, I run toward him and throw my arms around his neck. Oh, that's cute! I feel Rod snug- Oh, <laughs> snuggle his face into the crook of my neck. May I have this dance? Oh my god! It's so cute! Oh my god, they're in the door! <laughs> this is so adorable! He is so cute! He is so mature looking here. Oh, I cannot- I cannot help the fangirl this- fangirl this. I take Rod's hand and begin dancing to a silent song. The first time I danced with him was to prove a point. It was when neither of us even liked each other. I remember this as a stare at him. What? Is there something on my face? Oh, Sabi's not there either! Maybe that's plusing the matureness because I didn't see Sebi. I was just remembering how much he hated me back then. And now, here we are. Fate sure loves to toy with us. I smile at Rod. Just for a little longer. I want to be by his side. I don't know how long we can keep this up, but every day I wish for the same thing. I wish that I can live my life openly loving Rod. I wonder, what would that dream ever be possible? Is that it? That's it. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was so beautiful, guys. I love that. Rod, Rod is number one. He's number one on my chart right now. Oh my god, that story is so beautiful. To think, I thought like he was going to be my bottom tier story person. But he's my top tier right now. It's him, Claude, and then Chevrolet. The thing about Chevrolet that I probably didn't like is that he broke his curse before me in a super fast pace. So... And I kind of already like guessed the storyline on his. Like I knew that he was gonna break his curse, and then he's gonna help me break my curse after, and that everything, his storyline, everything was quickly progressed first. So it wasn't a mis mystery at all. But Rod and Claude, their story progression was slow, but it was a comfortable slow. Like I enjoyed it. Like I slowly learned about them. But then Chevrolet over here, I quickly bam 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 learned about him and then it's like Here, now I'm gonna help you. So right now oh that's so, so freaking precious. Rod is number one. He's absolute number one right now. Then Claude and the Chevrolet. Oh he is so cute. My love for him. He's so cute. I cannot I honestly I'm so shook. I didn't. I honestly did not know he was gonna be my favorite. <sighs> I'm so touched. I'm so touched with Rod right now. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Thank you for playing Cinderella Phenomenon. You're welcome. We're about to do it two more times. So this time we're gonna go with Fritz, and then I'm keeping Waltz last. Praying that Waltz. I'm, I have high hopes for Waltz's story, so I really hope we're not gonna get disappointed. Fritz as well, because I feel like since they're both locked, I feel like their stories should be the most powerful. <sighs> God, you're such. Uh, I achieve. Uh, you guys don't see the achievement, but I unlocked the merman's voice. <laughs> Oh, he's so precious. I really love him. But we're gonna do Fritz here. Right over here. We'll do Fritz's story next. And then we're gonna end it off with Waltz. And then I'm just gonna end it off with my final thoughts and my ranking of guys. But right now, Rod is number one. He is my absolute favorite right now. <sighs> can Fritz, can Fritz beat Rod though? Can Fritz really beat Rod is my questioning. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.